Right now, an E. coli outbreak connected to the McDonald's quarter pounder linked to restaurants in 10 states, including one person affected in Wisconsin. What you need to know. Also, looking at crime as the rhetoric amps up on the national political landscape, local law enforcement officials tell us what they're seeing. And just how close was a wrong way drunk driver in Milwaukee to colliding with the motorcade carrying Vice President Kamala Harris. We'll have the details. It's all next on News 3 Now at 5. And we have breaking news at 5. The Rio Community School District investigating a staff member who allegedly had an improper interaction with multiple students. The district has not provided further details about the alleged interaction. District officials say the accused staff member will not be returning to school on an indefinite basis. Local law enforcement has begun an investigation. And we continue with a developing story from Sun Prairie, where Sun Prairie East High School's principal has left after nearly three years, no longer in that role. And an email to district staff, Principal Renee Coleman, who has served in that role since 2021, will no longer be in that position. A reason was not given, but the district did say they appreciate all she has done to lead the high school during a significant period of transition. Associate Athletic Director Jim Ertel will now serve as the interim principal with no disruption to school activity. The search for a new principal is expected to begin early next year. Wisconsin, now the 10th state connected to this E. coli outbreak linked to McDonald's quarter pounders. Our Tanasia Shaw talked to experts about what you should know. More than 45 people are impacted by an E. coli outbreak. All of them ate a quarter pounder from McDonald's with contaminated ingredients. You shouldn't be worried inherently any more right now than any other time as far as eating out. According to the Center for Disease Control, one person is dead. These cases are causing some stores to stop selling the burger or remove onions off the sandwich. I bought a quarter pounder from a McDonald's here in Middleton. When I open it up, you can see the sesame seed bun, onions, pickles, ketchup, and of course, the infamous patty. Now, this looks pretty standard for a quarter pounder, and that makes sense. When I talked to employees inside, they said nothing has changed about the way they make the quarter pounder. Almost all the time when there's an outbreak of a gastrointestinal um, organism like this E. coli, uh, it has to do with um, people not washing their hands properly and, and transferring from one person to another. And so that then could you know, lead to contamination of any any type of food. If you're feeling uneasy after eating a quarter pounder, experts say you should go to the doctor. Usually you would have something where you just feel ill and then you'd get a bunch of gastrointestinal symptoms. Some people have fever, um, muscle aches, fatigue, that kind of stuff. Um, but the, the, the major concern is, is the diarrhea. It can take up to three weeks to feel any symptoms, and they can vary. For people that are really immunosuppressed, um, the very old, the very young, um, those those type of individuals might have a harder time with this and be at more risk for complications. I contacted the owners of McDonald's in Middleton on Greenway Boulevard and in Madison on Gammon Road. I have not received a response yet. The CDC is reporting that investigators are working to confirm which ingredients are making people sick. Reporting in Middleton, Tanasia Shaw, News 3 Now. Well, during the school day, do you know where your student is? In a new report, one in five children are reported as chronically absent. Wisconsin Policy Forum's report says the number is lower than last year, but still much higher than pre-COVID years. Chronic absenteeism is defined as missing at least 10% of school days or about 18 days missed per school year. Last year was a peak year for absenteeism, and the numbers have declined since then, although teachers say direct intervention is needed to stem the tide of skipping class. A breezy cool down in effect. Our first one forecast, meteorologist Blaze Keller joins us now. He's on the weather patio, Blaze. That's right, and that cold front is going to bring us our next chance for rain, and if you've looked at the moon these last couple of nights like uh, like our viewer sent us this photo here that we'll show you in just a minute. You might have noticed, so thank you Kelly, uh, might have noticed a halo around the moon. This was at a low die. There's some folklore that says when you see that halo around the moon, that rain or at least disruptive weather is going to follow uh, rather quickly behind it. So we are expecting that rain to move in as we head into your Thursday night into Friday. So uh, very quickly because she took that photo last night. And then we see some more rain chances as we go into next week as well. We are seeing an increased chance for rain here as we uh, move our way closer to the end of October. So let's jump ahead to a, about 830 on Thursday night. That's when the line of showers and thunderstorms is going to move on through here, wrapping up by early Friday, dropping anywhere between a quarter to a half an inch of rain. And for some of us, that's going to probably double the amount of rain we've seen up 
to this point in the month. Madison specifically, we haven't even seen a quarter of an inch of rain yet, so we desperately need it. We're going to track out that rain chance and a couple more chances in the extended forecast in just a few minutes. All right, Blaze, thank you. Former President Donald Trump and Vice President Kamala Harris virtually tied in Wisconsin in the latest Quinnipiac poll showing the two candidates tied at 48 percent, but that is a two-point gain for the Vice President since Quinnipiac's last poll two weeks ago. In Michigan, she's also overcome a three-point deficit, now leading by three points, 49 to 46 from the previous poll. Now, when it comes to the Senate race in Wisconsin, Eric Hovde has gained two points, making the race too close to call. In this poll, Senator Tammy Baldwin has 49% support to challenger Hovde's 48%. Continuing our three for the people coverage now, this week we're tackling the issue of crime. And today, our Maddie Himes brings us the perspectives of two local law enforcement officials. And Maddie, you asked, how the work they do in our communities is really affected by this national rhetoric. Yeah, Eric, sheriffs in Wisconsin are elected as partisan officials. I spoke with two of them on opposite sides of the aisle, but both tell me that since being elected, the most political part of the job has been the rhetoric people hear on TV. But no, it's been a challenge. It's been a challenge for sure. Uh, because there's been a lot of false uh, narratives on the law enforcement. In Columbia County, Sheriff Roger Brandner serves neighborhoods lined with both blue and red yard signs. Uh, we are really a split community. And down in Rock County, Sheriff Kurt Fell does the same, working to keep community morale high in a battleground state during election season. Sometimes it's just the, the heat of the moment stuff that creates other problems for us. It's better sometimes if people just settle down and try to have better conversations. The kind of ant antagonistic approach that, that seems to go on doesn't help anybody. With conversations about defunding the police and public trust in law enforcement at the forefront this past four years, they say the national rhetoric and the policy that follows can affect the way they serve. Certain people get into office if they change how some of the grants that are out there and funding that's available, it ultimately would affect us. When you have Everybody at the local level really working hard and, and, and doing that. And then you have state and, and federal officials that don't support that idea or, or play politics with it. Uh, now that affects us at, at the local level. Plus, when changes to federal policies like the border and the economy trickle down, local agencies are left to respond to the effects they can have on crime levels and community safety. Both Brandner and Fell were elected to their current term in 2022, in which Brandner ran as a Republican and Fell a Democrat. The sheriff's office, it, it, it's a partisan election when we get into it. But regardless of partisanship, both sheriffs say that when they put on the uniform, the only red and blue that matter are the flashing lights. Once we're in, I mean, law enforcement has to, to be the middle player. You can't. You can't delve one direction or another. It's not right to the people that are on either side. That 50% and this 50%, they're all good people. And they all deserve our, our professionalism and our attention and, and to do it right. And, and that's the way we focus it. Now, both Brandner and Fell tell me their main focus right now with the election approaching isn't the winning candidate, but the safety and security at the polling places that they serve. Maddie, thank you. Milwaukee police say a man is in custody after driving the wrong way on I-94 while under the influence nearly hitting Vice President Kamala Harris's motorcade. It all happened on Monday night about 8.30 when a 55-year-old man was driving in the wrong way. This was near the Marquette interchange approaching the motorcade. He was arrested facing charges of OWI and reckless endangerment. The man said he had no intention of harming the Vice President or anyone in her campaign. It is the latest public security breach, however, including the attempt at assassination of former President Donald Trump. Meanwhile, Republican vice presidential nominee J.D. Vance is stopping in Wisconsin next week. The Ohio senator will stop at the Racine Memorial Hall Monday afternoon. It'll happen about 530. He's expected to criticize the Biden-Harris administration over economic issues while talking up Donald Trump's economic plans. Senator Vance also expected to encourage Wisconsinites to early vote for the Trump-Vance ticket. Well, on the first day of in-person absentee voting, nearly 100,000 people cast their ballots across Wisconsin. The State Elections Commission reporting 97,436 people cast their ballots yesterday, up almost 450 percent from the 2020 election. However, of course, a large portion of that is due to people voting absentee rather than in person back during the pandemic. On the other hand, half as many absentee ballots have been turned in at this point compared to 2020. There are currently 3.5 million registered voters in Wisconsin. More, of course, can register at the polls on Election Day. Winter is right around the corner. That means things 
things will get colder. Sidewalks will need to be cleared. Some will use salt. Fitchburg's Department of Public Works reminding those using salt to enhance safety to be conscious of how much you use so you can protect our water quality. Just one teaspoon of salt can pollute up to five gallons of water making it toxic for freshwater ecosystems. Municipalities around the state use tons of salt to keep roads safe, but the SaltWise program manager, Allison Madison, says there are many ways to ensure safety while reducing salt use. So it's calibrating equipment. It's utilizing brine, um, brine both before the storm to prevent the formation of a bond between snow and the pavement, kind of like putting a little oil on your skillet, right? You prevent the bond from forming between food and the skillet, and it comes up much more easily. Now for information on how to reduce your salt use at your home or in your community, go to wisaltwise.com. Blaze is back. He'll rejoin us. A complete look at our first one forecast and how they're turning a piece of downtown Beloit history into an entertainment district. Opening soon, and we'll give you the details. Markets with a dive in midweek trading. The Dow tumbling 410 points. NASDAQ loses more than 296. S&P 500 falls about 54. We'll be right back. You're watching News 3 Now, brought to you by Cardinal Heating and Air Conditioning. Come on, baby. Don't be like that. We can get through this. I know we've had some hiccups, but I can't afford to lose you. A new furnace just isn't in my budget. Worried about breaking the bank? Ask us about our monthly payment plans. Insanity. Doing the same thing over and over and expecting a different result. Would you have done something differently than President Biden? during the past four years. Uh, there is not a thing that comes to mind. Kamala wouldn't change a thing. Their weakness invited wars, welfare for illegals, while Americans struggle. Now Kamala wants higher taxes on top of higher prices. We can't afford four more years of Kamala. I'm Donald J. Trump and I approve this message. When my husband got throat cancer, it wasn't just a health crisis. It was a financial one for my family. And that's something rural families know all too well. Joan Balwig voted against expanding affordable health care for rural families and against bringing drug costs down. And that's one reason I decided to run against her. I'm Sarah Kieski, and I'm running for state senate. Because when someone you love needs medical care, the last thing you should have to worry about is how to pay for it. Sometimes the smallest cracks can cause the biggest chills. This fall, Watch out for the draft. For quality windows, siding, and doors, call 866 for Feltco. I'm sick and tired of getting ripped off by career politicians. And Tammy Baldwin, she's one of the worst. Baldwin's in bed with Wall Street. While she sleeps in her girlfriend's million dollar condo in New York City, Wisconsin families are getting hammered by high inflation and handouts for illegal immigrants. Tammy and her girlfriend are living large while Wisconsin families foot the bill. Frankly, it's time for Tammy Baldwin to go. I'm Eric Coffey and I approve this message. Join my team and give today. Donald Trump intends to give tax breaks to billionaires and big corporations, to cut Social Security and Medicare, to impose what is in effect a national sales tax. When I am president, I will bring down the cost of groceries. My tax plan will give 100 million more Americans a tax cut. And unlike Donald Trump, I will always put the middle class and working families first. FFPAC is responsible for the content of this ad. I'm Kamala Harris, and I approve this message. Donald Trump makes a lot of promises, but we can be sure of one thing. If he wins, he'll ignore all checks that rein in a president's power. It's all in Trump's Project 2025 agenda. What does that mean for you? Higher cost on groceries, cuts to Social Security and Medicare, more tax breaks for billionaires, and a national abortion ban putting women's health at risk. A second Trump term, more unhinged, unstable, and unchecked. Beloit's historic Ironworks is getting a new entertainment hotspot, and we got to look at what to expect in this new space. It's called Henry Doorbakers, and it'll feature race simulators, a mini golf course, duck pin bowling lanes, and more. The entertainment center's namesake opened Beloit's first bowling alley back in 1899 and expanded bowling really across several towns in Wisconsin. General Manager Julio Petri says that this place brings the best of different types of fun together to make for a better experience. So, David Buster's. If you're, it's just arcade. 
you have pinball bars, you have mini putt bars. We don't really have the density in Beloit to just have a single thing. So putting multiple attractions into one area where everybody can kind of a one-stop shop entertainment is would work for our area. And he says they're planning to open the 20,000 square foot space on November 18th. The future of plane manufacturer Boeing will be decided in a Ewing vote, union vote tonight. 33,000 machinists have been on strike for over a month, costing the company several billion dollars. Now a deal is on the table that would offer a 35% pay hike over the next four years and a bonus of $7,000. The deal also ensures an incentive plan will be put back in place and there will be enhanced contributions to workers' retirement plans. Some picketers are skeptical about the deal. Results will be announced sometime this evening. U.S. and South Korean officials say there's evidence that North Korea is sending soldiers to Russia. And if the goal of the soldiers is to fight in the Russo-Ukrainian war, it would be the first time that a third country has put boots on the ground in this conflict. South Korea's spy chief says 3,000 North Korean soldiers are being trained to use equipment, including drones. Experts say this could be a sign of Russian weakness, but an influx of North Korean troops could destabilize Ukraine's defense. A look now at your first warned forecast. First warned meteorologist Blaze Keller now with what to expect the rest of the week. Blaze? And we continue to see an uptick in rain chances and our warmer than average temperature trend continues possibly into the start of November. Tonight though, back into the 30s and even a few upper 20s in some of our northern communities like Watoma coming in at 28 degrees tonight. A little bit of frost will be possible, but uh, again, we're going to continue to sit generally speaking under warmer than average temperatures and with that warmer air comes that added bonus uh, depending on who you ask uh, moisture warmer air tends to hold more moisture so we've got a bullseye of green over parts of not only Wisconsin but the plains in the Midwest from October 29th through November 2nd so we have that upcoming rain chance Thursday into Friday but then we'll see a couple more chances here before we end our extended forecast and that bullseye just sits off to our west as we go from Halloween through about the 6th of November so we're seeing that uptick but again, we're also seeing that chance for warmer than average temperatures to continue as well. So let's take a look at uh, that next chance for rain after Thursday, this coming up Thursday into Friday's uh, rain chance. We're have to jump ahead to next Wednesday. Here's another cold front moving on through, bringing with it that chance for showers and a few thunderstorms. But notice at the time when we start to dry out Thursday afternoon, so we should be dry because Thursday is, of course, Halloween for trick or treaters, maybe just a little bit of lingering cloud cover. I have to make mention of this. Despite the fact that we have been dry as of late, we have these drought conditions. Anywhere that you see a green here is operating with a surplus of rain since the start of the year through yesterday's day. And even where we find these pockets of blue up near Green Bay into northwestern parts of Dane County, as well as into parts of southeastern Dane County and Rock County, that's upwards of eight inches of extra rain compared to normal. So I just want to put that into perspective that while we are going to be getting more rain, we are operating, most of us, at a surplus of rain throughout the entire year. As I mentioned, with the additional uh, chances for wetter than normal conditions comes that chance for warmer than average conditions as well. We have a near 80 to 90 percent chance of sitting underneath warmer than average temperatures through the end of the month into the start of November. And that continues even into that 8 to 10 day for 8 to 14 day, excuse me, uh, forecast as well. Will be pretty seasonal Saturday. But then we jump to about 20 to 25 degrees warmer than average for our high temperature as we go into next Tuesday as well. So all of our forecast highs compared to normal over the next 10 days are expected to be warmer than average. 60s tomorrow with increasing cloud cover. We should be at about 56 degrees. We'll be in those low to mid 60s with Halloween right around the corner. Our forecast of about 59 degrees is pretty seasonal, but just slightly warmer than average. There has only been four Halloween's that we've actually recorded falling snow back last year and then the snowiest back on 2019 of four inches of snow falling and for folks who maybe don't really want snow to fall on Halloween. Don't worry. Only 9% of all Halloween's on record have recorded snow and that drops down to 2% if you take out all those trace amounts of snow. There was a look at your 10 day forecast taking us into the start of November. Showers and thunderstorms should wrap up in time for trick or treaters as I said by next Thursday which of course is Halloween but we're 
we're back up into those upper 70s to low 80s for next Tuesday. Let's quickly take a look at traffic across southern Wisconsin. We are seeing uh, just our normal slowdown spots in Dane County or along the Beltline, but south into Janesville, the north into the Dells. It looks like uh, traffic is moving pretty smoothly. Blaze, thank you. We come back, a Texas high school band bringing a different type of sound to their homecoming football game. The story just had at five. News 3 Now First Worn Weather is brought to you by Lazy Boy Home Furnishings and Decor. Discover a shopping and design experience as comfortable as the furniture. Lazy Boy Home Furnishings and Decor. Schedule your free design consultation today. The other side is lying to scare you. Truth is, Joan Balwig is a champion for women's health care. She fought hard to expand health care access for postpartum moms and supports access for IVF and birth control. We're voting for Joan Balwig because she votes for women like us. When it comes to your critical medical decisions, you should have the final say. But extreme politician Joan Balwig says you're wrong. She supports criminalizing abortion even after rape and incest. Or to save the life of the mother, Balwig would jail doctors for giving life-saving care. And Balwig even wrote the law that could deny women access to birth control. Joan Balwig would put extreme politicians in charge of your body and put all Wisconsin women in danger. Insanity. Doing the same thing over and over and expecting a different result. Would you have done something differently than President Biden during the past four years? Uh, there is not a thing that comes to mind. Kamala wouldn't change a thing. Their weakness invited wars, welfare for illegals, while Americans struggle. Now Kamala wants higher taxes on top of higher prices. We can't afford four more years of Kamala. I'm Donald J. Trump, and I approve this message. This is Senator Tammy Baldwin. This is her life partner, Maria Brisbane, a Wall Street exec who makes millions advising the super rich how to make money off industries Tammy regulates. Tammy doesn't get home to Wisconsin most weekends. She'd rather be in New York at Maria's $7 million condo. That's why New Yorkers have given Tammy over $1.3 million. Tammy Baldwin's not Wisconsin senator anymore. She's the third senator from New York. I'm Eric Covdy, and I approve this message. With high inflation, working families like mine are hurting, and Kamala Harris helped create this mess. Now, while Americans struggle, Kamala spent our tax dollars putting illegal immigrants up in hotel rooms, and she supported spending our tax dollars to give illegals sex changes. It's not just liberal, it's insane. Kamala Harris can never, ever be our president. Preserve America PAC is responsible for the content of this advertising. How extreme is Todd Novak? He thinks a woman's most private medical decisions should be up to him. Todd Novak has a 100% anti-abortion rating. He supports letting politicians ban abortion with no exceptions for rape, incest, or to save a woman's life. And Todd Novak authored the law to ban abortion here in Wisconsin. Elizabeth Grobby will defend abortion rights. She knows private medical decisions are between women and their doctors. Sarah Kieski, she supports lifting revenue limits, allowing property tax rates to skyrocket unchecked. Kieski's backers want to ban natural gas to heat our homes, driving utility bills through the roof. That's Kieski's record, expensive and extreme. You're watching News 3 Now at 5. Sounds of the crowd, cheerleaders, school band are expected at high school football games, but in Fort Worth, Texas, Things sound a little different. Reporter Mike Kinney tells us the story of a band that honors its local heritage. So we're at the Northside High School homecoming football game. It's all about the school spirit. All of the mums, the big Texas mums, the bigger the better. I'm glad I'm a part of it because I get to make my mom and support my school. We get to make memories that we might never experience again. When I think of homecoming, I think of football. More of the, the American culture. At Northside, we bring a little One, bit of a difference. Two, three, ready, and... Mariachi isn't often included in the, in the football season. Once they start playing and they start playing those rancheras that everybody knows, this is awesome to see that you're at a football game and you're hearing mariachi music playing at the same time. 
it's, it's a culture here in, in the north side. The Hispanic culture is very, very large in our population, so we make it a point to be able to have the students come out and, and have a good time. It's really fun to represent my community and my culture. To be able to come out here and do what we love, I feel a sense of pride seeing everyone support us. Mariachi has always been um, a safe space for me. It's always felt like home here. As the first generation in my family, I'm continuing that tradition. So as long as we support the community, com community supports us, I don't think we'll ever die. Well, the program was formed back in 1980 with the support of the Texas Commission on the Arts. And since then, Northside's mariachi ensembles have racked up countless honors and awards in its 40-year history. Well, the final check of your first one forecast after a short break. During COVID, Joan Balwig took half a million dollars in federal loans she never paid back. Then, voted to block assistance to help other Wisconsin businesses grow. Joan Balwig, out for herself, not you. My husband and I were elated to find out that we would be having another baby. But after many tests, my doctors agreed that we had to terminate the pregnancy. It was the worst day of my life. You should know that Eric Hubdi supports laws that stop me and my doctor from making that decision. And that's a ban with no exceptions in cases of rape or incest. It's a ban that could turn doctors into criminals. He opposes abortion, period. When Senate is responsible for the content of this ad. Trust your feet to Morgan's Shoes. Why Nout? Why not? Feel the comfort and durability of Nout footwear at Morgan Shoes. Nout shoes and sandals feature full grain leathers in a multitude of colors. Nout's cork and latex composite insole is designed for daily comfort and support, and they are made to last. You'll enjoy Nout's luxury. Shop Morgan Shoes Hilldale for your next pair. Comfort with style. Trust your feet to Morgan Shoes. Morgan Shoes Hilldale. Eric Hovde has a problem, a problem with the truth. Time and again, his ads have been called false. He's a desperate candidate willing to say anything. But here's what's true. Eric Hovde has a plan to slash Social Security 28%, Medicare 25%, veterans benefits 40%, all to spend $4 trillion on tax breaks for rich guys like himself. Eric Hovde's lying, and he's not for us. I'm Tammy Baldwin, and I approve this message. Insanity. Doing the same thing over and over and expecting a different result. Would you have done something differently than President Biden during the past four years? Uh, there is not a thing that comes to mind. Kamala wouldn't change a thing. Their weakness invited wars, welfare for illegals, while Americans struggle. Now Kamala wants higher taxes on top of higher prices. We can't afford four more years of Kamala. I'm Donald J. Trump, and I approve this message. We count on gasoline to power our cars, our tractors, our way of life. So why is a city slicker from Miami, Elizabeth Proppy, okay banning gas-powered vehicles? Extremists like Proppy want to eliminate fossil fuels, robbing hardworking families, farmers, and small businesses of their vehicles. Miami Liz's radical ideas hurt our families and our main streets. Don't let Proppy get away with it. Born and raised right here. Todd Novak is our independent voice for common sense, protecting our way of life. This is China, and this is Wisconsin. Joan Balwig invested thousands of dollars in Chinese companies, but voted against using state funds to help grow companies here in Wisconsin. Joan Balwig, out for herself, not you. Coming up tonight on the CBS Evening News, Vice President Kamala Harris's blunt warning about a second Donald Trump presidency. Today, accusing Trump of wanting unchecked power if elected. Plus, how both candidates are racing to shore up undecided voters in critical battleground states. We've got that and much more tonight on the CBS Evening News. The FAA ushering in a new era of aviation that brings us one step closer to being the Jetsons. For those of you who remember the Jetsons, there's now a completely new category of civil aircraft known as air taxis. FAA Administrator Mike Whitaker says there will be a new set of rules, operational requirements, and pilot training for these advanced air mobility vehicles. The changes are meant to ensure the safe integration of air taxis into U.S. airspace with possible uses including passenger transport, cargo, firefighting, along with search 
and rescue. We all thought it would come someday. Yeah. Final check of the forecast. <laughs> well, it's going to be quiet tonight. A cool one where you might actually be waking up to some frost on Thursday, but Thursday night into Friday, we could be dealing with some much needed rain. And that's not our only rain chance in the extended forecast. We have to jump ahead, though, to next week. After nearly flirting with the 80s by next Tuesday, we see some showers and thunderstorms Wednesday. But the good news is we dry out in time for the trick-or-treaters there on Halloween, which looks to be about seasonal, upper 50s to low 60s with partly sunny conditions. And that's pretty good, actually. Yeah, as long as it doesn't rain on those costumes. Yeah, no kidding. 59 isn't too shabby. No, not we'll too bad it. at all. All right, Blaze, thanks. We're back in 30 minutes for News 3 now at 6. Stay tuned for the CBS Evening News coming your way next.